All right. Uh, so we're starting to record at problem 11. I've just done problem 10. And we came up with an $88.01 per uh, in cost per CT. Now, problem 11 asks us, uh, assume the full price will include 15% profit. What would the full price of a CT be? Well, if the, if, if, um, the full price is going to be 15% profit, um, then $88 is going to be 85% of the full price because um, whatever the full price is, 15% of it would be profit, 85% of it, right? So the price is going to be 15% profit and 85% cost, right? And in this case, the 85% cost is equal to 8801. So the question is, what is the 15% profit equal to? So if 85% of the price is equal to 8801, we can just say 0.085 P equals 8801. Yeah, let me do a get a clean sheet. Um, so if 85% of the price is equal to 8801, we just divide through by 0.85. Right, and we get P is equal to about uh, 103.54. Uh, so, as I do with any, with any of the problems where uh, there's multiple steps between problems, uh, if you made a mistake in problem 10 and you came up with say, you know, $97, as long as you did uh, 0.85 times P equals 97 uh, and, and then, you, you know, uh, I gave you full credit for the problem. So anytime I have a, a problem that builds one on top of the other, whatever you come up with, just keep using it because I'm not going to penalize you twice. Like if you got it wrong, if you got 10 wrong and you came up with like $97, if you used $97 in problem 11, I, there would have been no penalty, right? Um, so this is, that's how you get uh, problem 11. All right. Problem 12. All right. Then we get a lot of writing. Um, so problem 12. What am I showing you? Problem 12. Uh, sorry, I'm having trouble. I'm, I'm not sure you're seeing what I want you to see. 12, screen two. Uh, all right, I've got a qu request to go back through four and five. Yes, I can go back and do four and five. Um, all right, my controls are mixing me up here. Can can somebody tell me? Can one of you guys text me and tell me if you're seeing uh, the the test the test right now in your in your view? All right. Yes, you are. Okay. Because it's not, usually it lights up for me so I can tell that, that you're see, that's what you're seeing, but it's not doing that for me right now. Maybe that's because I'm recording or something. Okay. Um, so for wildcat ophthalmology, um, we're now doing LASIK surgery. Um, and below is the, the projected static budget and the actual results for the service. And the first question asks about revenue. And he asks you if the shortfall was entirely because they did fewer procedures and then asks you to calculate volume and price variance to help him explain what happened to revenue. Okay. So let's run through what these things mean. Static column is what you think you're going to do before the period begins. 
actual is what actually happened. So this is what you know after the period ends, right? So static means, so static procedures means that we thought, uh, or the ophthalmology department thought it would do 2,500 LASIK procedures. After the period was over, they, they counted up how many they actually did, and it turned out they did 2,400. So a lot of people got this confused. Uh, I, was, I was a little surprised. A lot of people said, you know, were saying, well, they, they, they had an increase in, in um, volume. And, and uh, so I'm not sure where that came from, especially since it, it talked about, uh, in the problem, it talks about um, doing fewer procedures. So, so they really did do fewer procedures. That's not a trick question here. They thought they would generate $875,000 in revenue. Um, they actually generated $864,000 in revenue. So let me get my tools. Okay, so um, one of the things, the first thing you should do in a problem like this is you should jot down just for your own reference, static is price expected times volume expected, right? Actual is price actual times volume actual, right? And then this is going to be flex. And flex is going to be uh, price expected times volume actual. All right. So we had a shortfall, right, of 100 procedures. They did 100 procedures fewer than they thought they would. Now, this, um, so revenue variance, which you can calculate without doing any more work, uh, right, is going to equal 864 minus 875. So 864 minus 875 is negative 11,000. All right. So we know they had negative, so the chief of ophthalmology is correct, right? They had a negative revenue variance. And, but he's asking you, uh, well, he's not, he's asking, do you think it was all because of procedures? So the, the natural thing is here, okay, how much of it is due to the shortfall in volume and how much of it is due to uh, changes in price or how, whether we were accurate with our price or not. So we know what volume expected is. This is volume expected right here. Right? It's 2,500, and this is volume actual. Right? So we're given that. So we can, um, in order to figure out what price expected and price actual were, all we have to do is take our uh, static revenue and divide it by our, uh, our, our, our um, expected volume, and we'll get our expected price. So 875 divided by... Uh, 2,500 is um, 350. So uh, P E is 350. And then um, uh, so now we can say, okay, uh, what's our flex then? What's our flex revenue? Well, our flex revenue is our price expected times our volume actual. So our price expected is 350. Our volume actual was 2,400. So 350 times 2,400 um, gives us our, our uh, flex revenue. That's 840. Um, Oh, I could actually type. Okay. Uh, I don't do this, this particular method very often. Um, so in order to calculate <clears throat> our two variances, our volume variance, so vol is going to equal, let me see if I try this. Volume variance. 
is going to equal uh, revenue uh, flex minus revenue uh, static. And why is that going to be the case? Because flex has the actual volume and static has the expected volume. So the difference there is, at, but it holds price constant. So that's going to be um, 840 minus 875. And that's going to give us uh, negative 35,000. Then our, um, our uh, uh, price variance is going to equal revenue actual minus revenue flex. So that's going to be 864 uh, minus 840. So that's going to equal uh, uh, 24,000. So notice we had, for volume, we had negative 35,000, but for price, we had 24,000. So what does that tell us? What that tells us is um, that, yes, we did, uh, you know, the thing that caused the shortfall was, in fact, volume, but it was offset by the fact that we were actually able to charge higher prices um, than we expected. That's what the price variance tells us is the price variance tells us um, if our price variance is positive or revenue, it tells us that uh, we were able to charge more per uh, unit than we expected. Um, the volume variance, if it's positive, tells us we did more than expected. If it's negative, it tells us we did fewer procedures than expected. So a negative volume variance for revenue tells us that um, we did uh, we have lower revenue because we did fewer visits. For price variance, we it's positive because we were able to charge more per unit. And if you want to prove that to yourself, divide 864 by 2400, which I don't think I did, so let me do it real quick. 864, 864,000 divided by 2,400 gives us uh, $360 per. So price actual is equal to uh, 360, right? So um, we had we were able to charge $10 more per uh, per surgery than we thought we would. All right. So that's roughly the interpretation. I saw somebody sent me a text, but now I can't see it. Um, let me see. All right. Uh, Hannah said, how did you get the 840 again? Okay. So the way I got the 840, right? So flex, here, I like this now that I figured out how to use it. Flex revenue, or let me be consistent. Revenue flex is equal to um, uh, uh, price expected times volume actual. So in this case, the price expected was 350 um, and the volume actual was 2400. Okay, so 350 times 2400 gives us 840. And then Chris asked, how did I get 350? Okay, so Price expected is e is equal to my um, revenue static divided by my um, uh, volume expected. So the revenue static was eight seventy five. Um, the uh, volume expected was twenty five hundred. So I did eight seventy five divided by twenty five hundred. That gave me three fifty. Okay. Are we good? Chris and Hannah, is that good? Okay. Thanks, Hannah. Okay, good. Okay. So that is, um, so that is uh, 10. 
11 is going to ask, uh, 11 says, demonstrate to the chief that the volume also impacts cost by showing him the cost volume variance. Uh, explain to him how volume impacted profit by influencing cost. All right. Uh, if I, how do I clear this? Do I want to clear this? Uh, let me erase a little bit of this. Okay, so now we now we want to calculate. Um, we want to calculate the volume variance for cost. Now, volume variance for cost is you calculate the same way as you calculate the volume variance for revenue. Um, the volume variance you you need so volume variance for cost is going to equal. Um, the uh, uh, cost static minus cost flex, right? And we go the remember we go right to left for revenues and profits, and left to right for um, uh, uh, for uh, costs. So we've got the cost static. Um, that's 550. We're going to need to calculate the um, flex cost. So looking at fixed cost, it's 250 static, 250 actual. So therefore, we know that the flex fixed cost is also 250 because there was no change. Um, but if there had been a change, the way that you the number that you use here remember it's it's price expected times volume actual but since volume since this is fixed and it doesn't vary with volume essentially volume actual is just always one right so volume never changes um so it's only a change in price um that drives the actual um uh, flat fixed costs. So the, the change is between price expected and price actual. And so since flex is, is price expected, it's going to be equal to static. It's always going to be equal to static, whatever it is. So we know that's 250. We know it's 250 for two reasons. One, because the static and the, and the actual are the same. So that must, so therefore flex has got to be the same. Second, we know that um, flex fixed is always going to equal um, static fixed because the only the the um, thing that changes is the changes price expected to price actual uh, volume never changes so it's always going to equal uh, the flex fixed cost is always going to equal the static fixed cost okay that said for a problem like this I'm not going to mess with your fixed cost it's always going to be equal so you can just kind of count on that but if you do some of the problems in the book they they don't they do change it. Okay, so that gets us down to figuring out what the uh, uh, flex variable cost is. So the flex variable cost is the volume actual, which is 2,400, times the um, price expected, or the variable cost per unit expected. So the variable cost per unit expected is 300,000 divided by 2,500. So the variable cost expected, right, is equal to the variable cost, which is 300,000, divided by the uh, expected volume, which is 2,500. So that gives us uh, 120. So our variable cost expected is 120. So our flex then, is going to equal 120 times, so that's the expected price, times the actual volume, which is 2,400. And that's going to give us uh, 288. Okay, so then we add those two together. 288 plus 250 gives us 538. 
So that's our, our uh, total flexible cost, 538. And so to calculate our vol volume variance, we're going to take cost static minus cost flex, right? Which, uh, does that let me, that doesn't let me edit it once I stop. So that's going to be volume variance is going to equal 550 minus uh, 538, which is equal to 12,000. So we have a positive volume variance for cost. Why would that be? What does that tell us? Well, in this case, um, the change in cost uh, is purely a result of change in variable cost. And variable cost was expected to be 300. It actually turned out to be 276. Um, and a portion of that change, what the volume variance tells us is a portion of that change was the result of a decrease in volume. So remember, variable cost goes up with every additional um, with every additional visit. So if you do fewer visits, you're going to have less variable cost. So the way that the reduction in, um, in visits influenced our profits is uh, doing fewer visits caused us to have few, uh, lower variable cost. Lower variable cost causes us to have lower total cost. Our profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. If we have less total cost, then we have more profit. Okay, so the way that this, uh, the way that volume imp uh, uh, impacts profit is by having lower volume, we have lower cost, therefore um, we have higher profit. So volume hits in two ways. On the one hand, a lower volume reduces the amount of revenue you have, but on the other hand, lower volume reduces the amount of cost. So depending on which one has a bigger effect, uh, it could have either a positive or a negative effect on volume. So that is, in this case, we had a negative 35,000 impact for uh, revenue from volume, but a portion of that was offset by the fact that we had uh, lower variable costs as a result, so 12,000. So, 12, so we had $35,000 reduction in revenue due to lower volume, but um, $12,000 reduction due to uh, lower costs, and so there's a little bit of an offset there. Still would have rather had the more, more volume. All right, so that is, uh, that's 12 and 13. Questions about that? No questions. All right. So we're almost, where are we at? We're getting there. We're almost done. So Jisoo, don't let me forget to do four and five. Um, all right. So then going to, moving on to, uh, is this not going to let me? All right, now we'll move on to the um, multiple choice, which I'll do fairly quickly. Um, all right, so true or false, fixed costs are those costs that are known and fixed regardless of relevant range, while variable costs are those costs that are known only within the relevant range. Um, so this is, this is, they've twisted up the, the answer, uh, the, the definitions. Fixed cost is known only within a relevant range. Variable cost changes um, as you increase volume or decrease volume, but fixed cost has a relevant range, right? So if you have, remember the example we did in class was like we talked about um, the uh, 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 machine that, um, uh, you would use in the laboratory and it could do up to 20,000 visits. If you wanted to do more than 20,000 visits, you had to get a second machine, right? So the relevant range was 20,000. Um, so that, that, that was a fixed cost, whatever the cost of the machine was. I think we said it was like 50,000, something like that. So that is, um, uh, so that's the answer there. Uh, so it's, it's false uh, because they have flipped the definitions of, um, uh, uh, of relevant range. 
All right. Um, for 15, effective cost drivers should have which of the following characteristics? Well, they should be perceived as being fair. That's important. Uh, they should create an incentive for cost reduction. So those are the two main things that we talked about. Uh, was that the manager has to look at that and say, yes, that's a fair way to do that. And then two, the manager, ideally the manager ought to have some control over utilization so that the manager is encouraged to reduce her utilization of the resource. Um, so A and B are true. C says they should create an allocation rate based on patient revenues. Well, maybe, but maybe not. Um, so, so C is, C is, is not always true. Um, so therefore, uh, D is the answer, A and B, right? So they should be fair and they should provide an incentive. Could be true, you know, C is true sometimes, but not always. So you wanna choose A and B. Uh, uh, statement E is not correct um, uh, because it excludes B. Uh, if there was an A, B, and C, maybe you could argue with that, but but since, since E excludes B, then it's definitely not E. All right, uh, 16, which of the following pricing strategies is the most likely to lead to long-term financial sustainability? The answer is A, full cost. Uh, full cost incorporates the cost of everything as well as profit. Um, <clears throat> so you have to, uh, long-term, long you have to be pricing at uh, full cost. Short run, you could marginal, you could price at marginal costs, but that ignores your fixed costs. And so, you know, you're not going to be charging enough to replace your, your property uh, and, and equipment as it wears out if you're charging marginal costs, plus you're not getting any profit. Um, direct cost would ignore all of the support from higher level. Um, so that would be like, like setting a, a price for your CT with ignoring the fact that housekeeping contributes uh, some cost to uh, CT. So if you only did direct cost pricing, then you're ignoring all the support that the uh, profit center gets from its support centers. Indirect cost, you know, obviously, this is kind of obvious if you think about it. Um, if you set pricing equal to indirect cost, you're ignoring the cost of actually providing the service. Um, but you're incorporating all the things like the cost of HR and the cost of housekeeping. So that's kind of silly if you actually think about it. Uh, in this class, variable cost and marginal cost are essentially the same thing because we aren't using anything more complicated than linear uh, cost models. So again, variable cost pricing ignores all the fixed costs, which typically uh, represent your big investments in your equipment that you're spreading over a large, uh, large volume, hopefully. Um, so again, A is the only valid answer. Uh, 17's got a lot of kind of stuff buried in it, but the question is, which of the following statements about a flexible budget is the most correct? So um, remember, flexible is price expected times actual volume. So if you cruise down here, see flexible budget uses realized actual prices. No, it uses expected prices. So A is wrong. A flexible budget uses realized actual labor costs. Well, labor costs is another kind of price, and it's expected labor costs, not actual labor costs. So no. Uh, C, um, uh, flexible budget uses realized actual supply costs. No. Again, actual uh, pricing again. Flexible budget uses realized actual facilities costs. No. Again, as if you're doing PA rather than PE. Here, uh, E, flexible budget uses realized actual volume. Yes, flexible uses actual volume expected prices. So E is the answer. All right, that is it um, for, for the exam. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna answer, don't forget four and five. Thank you, Jisoo. Um, I'm gonna go back and do four and five unless somebody has, I'll, I'll redo four and five. Um, does somebody have a question about any, any, any of the multiple choice or any other quick questions? All right, well, you can still ask me. I'm gonna roll back to four and five then. <clears throat> and feel free to drop out, you know, if you've done, if you feel satisfied, you know, it looks like people are starting to drop. Okay, so, um, so feel free to drop at any point. Uh, Four and five. All right, four and five. 
Um, doo, doo, doo. All right, four. Uh, so going back through four. Hold on, let me just get my cheat sheet. Um, this is a break-even problem. The thing that you need to be paying attention to with this one um, is it is capitated, right? So that threw off a lot of folks. People got a little confused about how to calculate um, their uh, uh, their revenues. But this is going to be a a a um, uh, capitated problem. So I'm going to switch back uh, to my worksheet here. And so our, the critical information we have is this is a capitated. So we're going to we're going to we know our revenue is going to come. Uh, from from uh, in a capitated format, so we have five thousand uh, capitated lives or five thousand members. We have a PMPM of twenty two dollars, and we have fixed costs of eight hundred and fifty thousand, and we have a variable cost per visit of twenty. And the question is, what is the break-even number of visits for Wildcat uh, outpatient clinic under this contract? Okay, so remember, with um, with um, capitated, our revenues are fixed. So our profit function is profit equals total revenue minus total cost. <coughs> and in this case, our total revenues are fixed and they're fixed based on the contract that we have with our insurance company. So our total revenues are going to be $22 per member per month times 5,000 members times 12 months is going to give us 1,320,000. So our total revenue is fixed at 1,320,000. Our total costs are like we normally do. Fixed cost, 850, plus variable costs, 20V, right? So our profit function, so we're trying to find break even, so we're gonna set profit equal to zero. So zero equals total revenue, which is 1,320,000, minus total cost, which is 850 plus 20V. We carry through the negative, 1320 minus 850 minus 20V. Right. Consolidate like terms, we get zero equals 470,000 minus 20V. Add 20V to both sides, we get 20V equals 470. Divide by 20, both sides by 20, we get V is equal to 23,500. All right, so um, so V is equal to twenty three thousand five hundred. Uh, what does that mean? Well, we're gonna we're gonna look at that in a second with the graph. But that but remember this this break even is for a capitated arrangement. Under capitation, we have a fixed. Um, all right, Casey, thank you. Uh, we have a fixed um, uh, uh, revenue amount. And so um, when we hit 23,500, uh, we are, we are, we're moving into our zone of loss, right? So let's draw this. So you were given a graph and you were asked to do the CVP analysis. So we have visits down here and we have dollars up here. <clears throat> so drawing this, we know, let's start with costs because those are, all, are essentially always the same regardless of whether we're doing capitated or fixed cost. So fixed costs are constant. They're independent of the number of visits. So if you do zero or you do 25,000, um, fixed costs are fixed and they're at 850, right? Total cost is fixed cost plus variable cost. Well, variable cost is $20 per visit. Um, 
So at zero cost, at zero visits, we have zero variable cost, but we have at, but at zero visits, we still have the 850,000. So our total cost at zero visits is 850. And then it goes up from there at a rate of $20 per visit. So our total cost is our fixed cost plus our variable cost. So the gap between total cost and variable cost is fixed cost. Now what's different about this problem because it's capitated is our total revenue is independent of our number of visits. We get 1,320,000 whether we do zero visits or whether we do 50,000 visits, right? It's still 1.32 million. So we're gonna draw this straight line. Total revenue is this flat line just like fixed cost. <clears throat> Where it crosses the total cost line just like with a fee for service graph, is our break even, draw a dotted line down to um, the volume axis or the visits axis, and that gives us our break even volume, right, which we said was 23,500. To the left of 23,500 visits is profit, right? Profit is when total revenue is above total cost. So this is 1320, okay. Right, so at zero visits, we're making 1.3 million and we're paying 850,000. So we have a big wedge of profit. As we start doing more visits, we move and we move towards the break even volume, right? We get a smaller and smaller amount of profit. Um, so at, you know, um, a thousand visits, uh, that's a thousand times 20 uh, is 20,000. So we'd have 870,000. Um, in cost, right, as opposed to zero to 850,000 at zero. So as we're moving to the right, doing more visits, we're getting less and less profit, okay, until we ultimately hit um, the break-even volume of 23,000 at which we're making zero money, and then we move into the zone of loss, right? So this is profit, to the right is loss, so this becomes our zone of loss to the right. So the 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 profit and loss areas are reversed you, when we do capitation. So our incentive under capitation is to do fewer visits. So that's four and five. Oh, we're down to three people. All right. And it's me, Jisoo, and Julia. So what questions you guys got? Just you and I, just the two of you now. Um, are we going to get our exams back? Uh, to study with or no? Yeah, I'll give them to you. I mean, as soon as the university opens, I'm happy to give them to you. Oh, uh, okay. They're they're uh, they're graded and they're sitting on my counter. I don't remember if we got exam one back. Did we get it back? Yep. Oh, okay, okay. Which yep. One? Check my folder then. Oh yeah, my one was forty. What was your All right, thank you. Yeah, sure. Anything else, Julia? All right, Julia's good, okay. Okay, guys, so I guess, um, unless you want me to do something else again, uh, I think we're done. Okay, Julia's all set. Jisoo, you all set? Jisoo's gone, all right. All right, Julia, have a great uh, day, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.